Welcome back to Power Electronics, and we continue on with our series of resonant DC to DC converters. And in this quick video, we're going to show how to derive the equivalent resistance, RE. That is the resistance from our load when we, we reflect it back through the full wave bridge and possibly through the, the either step up or step down transformer. Here's an overview, and basically there's only one topic we're going to do in this one, and that's the, the derivation of the equivalent resistance. But there's a couple steps to do that. First, we're going to define RE as a phasor voltage uh, divided by the phasor current for the first harmonic. And that's our definition for the equivalent resistance. Uh, in the second step, we're going to determine the output voltage by noting it's a rectified square wave on the secondary side of the transformer, as well as on the primary side, and then we're going to represent that voltage in terms of the square wave on the primary voltage. And that square wave is being driven by our switching DC to AC inverter system, the half bridge. The third step, we're going to find that the average output current for the load, and we're going to reflect that back to the primary side of the transformer. And we're going to use the fact that it is a uh, full, full wave bridge sinusoidal type of wave that's going to determine our average current. Finally, we're going to use uh, the fourth step, the Fourier series for our square wave, and determine the phasor voltage in terms of that square wave. So those are the four steps to derive the equivalent resistance. Um, so we're, we're focusing now on this side, and we want to reflect the load that our output voltage sees back to the resonance circuit for analysis. And here's the circuit we're going to analyze, and we'll be replacing all of this with an equivalent resistance. Uh, notice I'm doing this for the series LLC, where uh, the other additional inductor is due to our magnetizing current for our transformer. So let's switch over to notebook. Here we have our circuit. And there's a couple of things that we'll need to note. First, recall that the primary voltage divided by the secondary voltage is equal to the, the number of turns in the primary windings divided by the number of turns in the secondary winding. And for here we show a n to 1 on our winding ratio. So the primary to the secondary VP is equal to n times the, the secondary. In a similar manner, the current has a reciprocal equation where the current in the primary is 1 over n times the current in the secondary. Next, note that our switching waveform will appear across the primary of our transformer as a switching waveform that will have height VDC divided by 2 and minus VDC divided by 2. And that will appear as the output as a switching waveform as well. And that waveform will be fully rectified with the diodes. And so our output waveform will be V out. However, however, due to the transformer, we see that V out times N is equal to VDC divided by 2. And we're going to use that equation in just a bit. Also note that we'll have current flowing through the two diodes, and it will result in a pulsed waveform with an average value I-O. Let's graph that and determine the, the value. I'm going to label its peak I secondary and the average value, I sub O. It's a simple example to show that I sub O is equal to 2 times I secondary, the peak of that magnitude, 
divided by pi. A matter of fact, this was one of the first homework problems in the class. But the current in the secondary is related to the current in the primary through the turns ratio of the transformer. Therefore, I sub secondary, which is equal to pi times the average current divided by two, can be reflected to the primary side, and therefore I primary is equal to one over N times I secondary, or it's equal to pi times the average output current divided by two N. Now let's go back to the switching waveform on the primary side of the transformer. It had a peak height of VDC divided by two to minus VDC divided by two. The first harmonic associated with this voltage, V sub P, is equal to four times VDC divided by two all over pi. And that comes from the Fourier series expansion for a square wave. And this is the first harmonic magnitude. We're now in a position to write our equivalent resistance. RE is equal to, or defined as, VP, our phasor voltage for the first harmonic, divided by IP, our phasor voltage for the current for the first harmonic, which is equal to four VDC divided by two all over pi, divided by pi I out all over 2N. And that's equal to 8N VDC divided by 2 over pi squared times I out. But recall VDC divided by 2 is N times our output voltage. And therefore, RE is equal to 8 n squared times our average output voltage divided by pi squared times our average output current. Well, the key points for this video were pretty simple. We uh, derived the equivalent resistance for our uh, DC uh, to DC series converter. It works for both the series LC and the series LLC converter. And we see that our equivalent resistance is equal to the turns ratio squared of our transformer times eight divided by pi squared. Eight divided by pi squared is a number slightly less than one. Our turns ratio will have the biggest impact of how it modifies the equivalent resistance. Recall when n is greater than one, we have a step down transformer. So that load will look like a higher resistance for a buck type of converter when we reflect it back uh, across the transformer. Thank you for watching.